Okay. Uh, welcome to the Tuesday Night Review. Yo. My name is Tommy. My name is Yazid. I feel like that was wrong. Wait. No, it was okay. Oh, okay. Uh, my name is Yazid, and this is Tommy. And I'm Yazid. And this is a podcast where we give kind of informal reviews about albums and movies, and kind of just talk, shoot the shit, as they say. I don't think anyone is... And not even my dad, who says... People say stuff No. Nope. Like um, so, so today we're going to start with the album that Tommy chose, which was Don Solaris by 808 State. Um, it's a 1996 album, electronic dance album, um, and it's from a group that's... 808 State's from Britain, I believe Manchester. I I'm could not, be wrong about that. I don't know all that but information. But I'm pretty sure they're from, they're from Britain, so... Yeah, um, I guess you should. We'll start with me. My reaction. Yeah, because you're the. So I really I like this album. I I thought it was a really solid album. Ooh. Um, yes. Would you listen again? Yeah, yeah, and I have listened uh, multiple times, and there are some songs on there that I definitely will add to like playlists that I will listen to. Um, I would say my favorite tracks were Azura. Joyrider, Lopez. I Joyrider was definitely my favorite. <laughs> I don't want to give it the same range. Um, so <laughs> my least favorite was Balboa. I just thought it has this very grimy bass on it. And and um it has like more of a techno aesthetic than it does like a dance electronic. I don't know how to describe it exactly, but it just feels like really like 90s spy movie aesthetic. And it's just, I didn't really like it that much. But barring that, I thought that it was really solid. Uh, all the songs I pretty much liked. Um, oh, yeah. Alright. So you want to give me, or you want me to give mine on it? <laughs> yes? Yeah. Okay. Alright. So, you know, I like the intro, the outros. I thought the intro, very good. And all the I did uh, so the intro is something that's interesting because it's like um, what I kind of related it to was you know like when before an orchestra plays and they are tuning their instruments and it's oh, just this kind of thing you know what I mean that's a reference and um, yeah. and and that's how it kind of sounds um, it's just kind of like all this noise that it doesn't it's not really a song right it's it's an intro yeah so it kind of sets you up for this kind of um, array of music that you're going to be hearing um a lot of different instruments a lot of different sounds that go on so i thought it was it, did, it was a good setup for it it had a, it served a purpose so i don't like when intros just are like there's no point oh yeah them. i hate when it's like choose wisely yeah we get it <laughs> i guess <laughs> no i know what you're saying i i appreciated this one and the uh, i wouldn't say all all between the songs, but most of them, in my opinion, there was good transitions. I appreciated on this yeah. album. Mm -hmm. That, like, there would be, like, the ending of one song would be the beginning of another. I, I liked it a lot. And I, if, the first time I personally listened to it, I just left it on and on my phone and I just listened to it and I was like, when's the song ending, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I kind of couldn't tell because it's electronic music and they kind of, like, go off sometimes. Mm -hmm. So that was interesting to see that I was like halfway through the album and I was like, whoa. Yeah. Um, what That's why I had to keep track of like which ones are which, you know, because I was trying to find out which songs I would, you know, bring to the table as my favorites. So I kind of had to like watch it and see what was going on. I liked uh, all of your favorites. I would say I definitely agree with uh, Azura, but Joyrider and Lopez, they're all right. Lopez is pretty good. Joy Rider is where I might I really disagree liked, with you on. I really liked Lopez's vocal performance. I don't know who it was by. I mean, I, was, I could find out. But, I was going to ask but you. But that, that was really what added a lot to it. I really liked the, just the, like, I don't know. There was something about regrets in the lyrics or, like, a world without regrets. I may be a little bit wrong, but, but I only listened to it probably, like, three times. But but I really liked, 20. there was just, like, the, the singing on it was really good, and, and, and I really appreciated that. 
that's what really uh, advanced it. But Joyrider, I really liked too. How did you feel about like all the different vocals on all the tracks? I mean, all the tracks I did. I thought have they vocals. were fine. Um, what was the one? Bond was the one with the first vocals. Yeah, I, I thought that was even fine too. I I didn't mind that. I like that. That wasn't really like spoken word or anything. That was more just this kind of like sedated delivery. Um, but I thought that was cool. There was some. He keeps like. The lyrics like they just keep repeat this line a little bit a couple of times. It was like psychedelic. Almost. And I really like that. Um I thought that was cool. My uh my uh favorite tracks I guess if you're uh I'll just say it. Oh, it's cool. Okay. So here are my favorite songs. Yeah, that was a cut cuz things not working. <laughs> Oh, uh, got to say it fake now everybody, but my favorite tracks were Bond Bird uh, cool. I probably know. I still don't want to say it, even though I said it before. But Kootek, n- track number nine, and track number twelve, which is the last one, Banachek. And basically, I, I'm conflicted about whether Bond is my favorite or Bird is. But Bird, I guess, would really be my favorite. Uh, I like the whole album. I thought it's uh very like ridiculous and crazy and the cover art is a chicken Mm -hmm. i thought that was kind of weird and i just i just really like this album yeah i think it's just interesting knowing your love of like daft punk and stuff this isn't totally daft punk yeah this is like um (laughs) this is the opposite end of the spectrum i guess you would say you know um Mm -hmm. it's it's not the same driven wise so when I when I think of Daft Punk, I think about a lot of like not maybe not fast paced, but very it flows in a certain way. When I think of, you know, if that's your only thing with dance music, you know, that's gonna be kind of the wrong idea about dance music or electronic music, yeah. because for me, I I feel like a lot of the beats and a lot of the drums and everything that are because this is a very I think this is dr- Daft Punk isn't very drum oriented. You know, they're more like vocals, vocals, and and, and other things and, and, and yeah. stuff. And but I'd say that you know a lot of these tracks are based a lot. The rhythm is based on these drums, right? Mm-hmm. And yes. I think I've heard the one I've heard um, against all logic, two thousand twelve to two thousand seventeen, which is a you know recent release in the dance electronic genre, is more like this. It's more of these kind of drums that are you know almost awkward and jilted in certain parts where you're like, ooh, that's just, like, it almost doesn't work, you know? Mm-hmm. And, it, but it, it does, it, it works in the end, and, and it all comes together to be a track that you like, at least if it's good dance music and good electronic music, which I thought this one was. But um, it was just interesting to think, you know, about the way it's built and the way it's structured. Cause Especially it's, from the time that it was made, too. Well, I, I don't know, because I don't know about what... Like, this is from 1996, right? So... That's relatively... Uh, not necessarily. No, you're right. It's not, like, the oldest thing ever, right? It, they started It's more contemporary like, than you would say about, you know, other stuff. I don't know... There's, like, ten years, I guess. Or maybe, like, eight what? or six years of, like... Uh, like, this kind of style of music already out. Because there was, uh... We talked about this briefly, I believe, like Mr. Fingers. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Uh, I forget his real name. L- heard, something heard. But basically, I guess he was like the first person that made all this like deep... Uh... Deep house is what you Yes, know? yes. But, and that kind of like ran into everything else, you know what I mean? Yeah, and but I don't think that... This isn't house music, I don't think. Um, no, but it's... It, but yeah, yeah. But, dance. But, but it's more of like this kind of dance. To be honest, I would say it... I mean, I, I'm not an expert, you know? I'm not. And, and dance and electronic and all that stuff is not necessarily where I know a lot about music and stuff, but mm-hmm. this didn't strike me as house or even more... Even I didn't even really see it as electronic all that much. I, almost, I would see it primarily as dance music. Just because of the way that uh, these are like organic drums, right? Okay. Not not necessarily. You know what I mean. Like they're not, obviously they're they're in a program and everything, but they're not. They don't have a synthetic feel. Yeah. Necessarily. Um. So I would say that really I awesome. thought this one is more like dance music, and I, I. But again, like I said, I like the pretty much the whole thing. The only one I didn't really like too much was Balboa. It just. 
How did you feel about uh, Black Tar Tardagon? It's Dart. Dar oh, oh, Dartagon. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It was like six minutes. I, that's the only track that I was like very iffy on. That was, that was a little long. Well, what I'll say is that uh, with a lot of these tracks, the you know the it's not the same thing over and over again for that's yeah okay you know, yes yes five minutes straight. The, there's a lot of changes that go on, and and more so than I would say. There is in like a Daft Punk song or anything. I think that the the you know. They're not getting their, um, their uh, appeal isn't in repetition. Like, you know, you would say a Daft Punk is, right? Oh, definitely. One so, more time. And again, we don't, we're not saying that they're any way related to Daft Punk, but that's where our, like, dance, electronic Knowledge. music stems from mostly, you know? Yeah. So that's the reason we are talking a lot about it in comparison to Daft Punk. But, and Discovery is like, I mean, that's a 10 out of 10. Um, Almost. So... <laughs> What I'll say is that the the changes that go on keep you interested. You know, I, I think yes, it doesn't really rely on you liking one part and then pushing that part over and over again with a little bit of changes. It's not like these small changes. They grow. They progress. They're changing in terms of like the structure and the way the song is built and the you know aesthetic that's going on. So I, I I'm fine with tr tracks being longer if if the switch if there's a switch up and there's just this kind of like organic feel like it's alive like there's movement there's changes okay. because then I think it's like I can hear you know I I have to stay till the end you know and yeah. to see what where it goes it's not just like the same thing over and over again yeah it all stems back from that interesting you know kind of point. But it, de it definitely has me wanting to listen to more um, 808 State. Um, just because I, I, I think, I guess they're very prolific. You should, uh, if the next one, you haven't delved into it yet, have you? No, I did not listen uh, to it. The next years. one I would give to you is 90. It's called 90. Okay. It's a 9-0. Nine, nine yeah, yeah. And that's a, I've listened to that album. I've listened to a couple of them. But ninety is uh, another great one, I, I guess you could say. It, it close, not close to this, but it's. So was this one the first? Just how did you, this was the first one you listened to of them? Well, uh, all right. So how I got into my electronic scene, I guess you could say, was from this. It's from a YouTube channel called The Wonky Angle, and this guy named Tommy. I don't know if I told you this or no. I don't know. No, I don't think so. Okay, so it's basically this guy named Tommy, who just strictly. Like, just talks about electronic music. Yeah, I actually, I think I listened, I think I definitely watched the review for it. Yeah, he looks so weird. The only reason I watched the review for it is because I had, um, I was looking for information on 808 State, and there's not really a lot of written reviews for it. And I'm not, like, wanting to look up a review to know what I have to say, right? It's not about that. Mm. I just needed... I wanted to look for, like, the context of where of this yeah, is yeah. coming and things like that. So I, I listened to probably just the first five minutes of him talking. I know he yeah, it's talked about, about like he said, minutes. it's like, no, it's like 19 minutes. Oh, okay, yeah. He, oh, yes, because for this one, he, he... It's a 10, he said. Yes, that's what I thought was very interesting because he he is, I believe, an exception for everything that I've watched that he... Himself, when he got, I, I don't feel like we're just like plugging him in, like go follow Zero yeah. or something. Uh, but anyway, I just think he's really cool, and he talks about a lot of electronic music, and he likes 808 State. If he's giving one album a ten, I don't think it deserves a ten. But if he's saying it's that great, he just has a certain ear to it. But basically, I looked at all his 808 State videos, and they're pretty positive. Like he likes a lot of what they do. Yeah, which I thought was interesting because I, you know, I've never heard of this, you know, band or a group, sorry, and um, and not to say that that's like a bad thing. No, I, I wasn't gonna say that. Not to say that it's like, all right, well, no one's ever heard of these guys. You know, people have heard of them uh, to a certain degree, but but it's and I'm I'm not like in the dance music scene at all, right? Mm -hmm. But I do follow music. Closely and stuff, and I've never heard a mention of them 
So for me, I think that they're very prolific in terms of their releases and, and the quality of music, at least from this one album. So I think it's just kind of strange. Um, I think they probably deserve more recognition and credit for what they kind of bring to yeah, the table. There's a, there's a lot of people in the EDM scene that don't get a lot of recognition because it's... I would say it's a lot. It it's a lot easier to make a song without well, vocals and and like well, a back. Well, yeah, can, but also I think that the pro, it, the, the same thing is with with EDM music is that you know when I when someone says EDM music, this is probably not what I'm thinking of. I'm, I think I think of more like. Um, Probably more like dubstep, even though it's not exactly the same it's thing. It's a wide genre. And, it really is. But probably even more like house music. I, I won't even, I wouldn't even like put, I know EDM is electronic dance music, right? Yeah. But I feel like when someone says EDM, I think of something different than, you know, even Daft Punk, I wouldn't even say. I, I, I know that they fall into EDM, at least what it stands for and what it means, but I feel like EDM is in the mainstream taking on a different like connotation but what i was going to say about it is um that it's easy the the popular edm is this kind of is the pop you know it's the pop edm yeah. that you hear and, and and like dubstep is kind of dying now but that the aesthetic of dance of uh dubstep is actually it's just been interjected into a lot of pop music and it's now used in it um but for this, this is like not something that works in the you know mainstream. It's not something like anything you're hearing. It's not no oh, yeah you know this kind of and not to say it's hard to get into. It I don't think it's really hard to get into. You know no. But I think for someone that listens to just like generic music or not interested in like dance music, and I think that it's gonna be harder. It's gonna be hard for someone that just likes Daft Punk. To get into this, because it's not the same thing. That's that's how I found his channel. I know I don't want to talk about it too much, but he's a certain character that I have taken interest in because he makes his own music too. He's very strange, and he listened. He mentions all of these like groups that I've Square Pusher, the Orb, Orbital, like all these weird like uh, groups that I've never heard. Yeah. And I found him through Daft Punk because I searched up Homework. That's their first album, their whole dance album. And I was like, all right, let me see what like real people are talking about. And I searched yeah, it up on exactly, YouTube. Exactly. And he popped up and he's like, yeah, I don't really like this album. I was like, whoa, what the hell? Yeah, but, but that makes, for me, that makes sense. Because I think, when I think of Daft Punk in relation to like music like this, yes, I think that Daft Punk is not, it's not like the easiest... It's not the easiest music to get into, but I think it is a lot easier. It just has this poppiness to it, right? Mm -hmm. Which it's also very repetitive too, and he, and that in itself is hard for music in general. A chorus is one thing, but to repeat like a line over and over and try to get people to love it, that's it's a hard step to overcome. Yeah, but I I think that in the, at least in the mainstream, it's easier. Repetition in pop music is the is the most common staple of it. Mm, yes, it would be harder to get someone into this than Daft Punk. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, you're right. I would. So okay. I think that for someone that appreciates more of like the less poppy side of it of a um of any genre to push them into this like poppier side, like it's the same thing for like rap music. So if someone like listens to like most Def. Oh, and then the other and then side, they, and then the other side is like low pump. They're gonna be like, "Yeah, I don't like this as much." Yeah, that's there's true. just less to it. Which, yes, there is. I'm not gonna sit here and say that there's not less to low pump than there is to like a most deaf song. There is gonna be. That doesn't necessarily mean that the quality uh, that that inherently means that there's a difference in quality. That doesn't. But if you're into something more complicated, when you listen to something more simple, it might be a turnoff. Yeah. Because Daft Punk is very simple compared to something like this. Yeah. At least what I have found, and I and I and, and I've listened to dance music before, and more like modern and not modern, but more recent releases in in the dance music sphere. 
but they're, they relate more to this 808 state style. This kind of like drum driven, um, awkward almost type of feel. And, you know, that's what I've experienced. That it's definitely, it's not the poppy side of dance music. This is the dance music side of dance music. Yeah. Maybe not experimental. I don't know how. I don't. I wouldn't say this is anything like no, ridiculous. This no. seems pretty, not run in the mill, but just standard, I guess. Uh, not to say it's not good and not Solid. reinvented, <coughs> but 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 I don't think this is like, the, <coughs> you know, out there. This isn't like the re, like someone reinventing the wheel or anything, but it's someone doing something that's very solid. So yes. you know, I think we both liked it and yes, definitely yes. we'll listen to this again. Yeah. So yeah. One hour, 47 minutes, 94% Round Tomatoes, 88% at Metacritic. What's up? Okay. So, Whiplash. Yep. All Wait, right, did so... Did you start it for real? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you said you were ready to go. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm ready, so, so what's up? So, still on that, so... Wait, did uh, you get all of it? It's directed by Damien Chazelle. Yeah, I knew that. I picked this. I well, know, I picked it. Um, and I... Tommy, I think I've seen it before this. I have seen it before. But let's see, let's hear your reaction. So, my reaction was that Mr. Heisel actually recommended it to me. Okay, no, that see. wasn't my question. No, I know, but I just wanted to tell you. Okay. I thought it was interesting. Um, so, basically, I don't know how to, I always have a hard time with these movies, where to start, but I guess I will start with, so there's Neiman, this uh, student. And basically, it's like a battle, I guess you could say. A music battle. Okay, if I'm going to make it really simple. And uh, Terrence Fletcher, his ideology is that the ends justify the means. Yeah. And while they might be brutal, he might beat them, he might give them mental torture, that in the end... He played the part pretty well, and he got the approval of Fletcher at the end. Now, from the end of this movie, you can really go uh, a couple of ways. I, I really don't see it as like, oh, he he's a great drummer. He's going to do everything. He, st- he still got like fucked at the end, basically. Because that's the only two pieces of music he knows, Whiplash and Caravan. Mm. And Fletcher was like... Yeah, we're, you're good, buddy. And basically, he doesn't know any music because he played some other stuff. But somehow, Neiman pulled it off, and that's that. But I guess I didn't really answer your question at all. I like this movie. I liked it a lot. I think it's really good. It's a really good movie. Not so much for... Not so much for the scenes, I guess you could say. You probably have some kind of stance on the scenes. But I like the idea. And I like the whole idea of uh, Neiman being this... He is really self-righteous. And he thinks he's pretty good. And he listens to these great musicians. And he wants to be the best. He strives to be the best. And his teacher... uh, Fletcher basically pushes him like to the point where he got in a car accident and he goes out and he wants to he earned the part and he wants to play his part Mm -hmm. and he basically at the end too I'll also talk about that uh, he didn't know any music and he walked away to his dad and he realized that you know what I got this and he turned it around like that was crazy so i mean that's a bad explanation of the movie but i thought it was a really good movie it's about music it's about drumming which i mean they kind of related the the music and the movie a little bit but it's a good movie i i say it's about like i don't we don't really give numbers but eight out of ten i thought the album was eight out of ten by the way also but go ahead you see so i'm just rambling i do like Whiplash quite a bit, um, but I think I um, I like it more when I think about this kind of. I guess let's go with the hero's journey of Neiman. You know, okay. 
this kind of... This isn't like... As much as he triumphs at the end, he really doesn't. So, by that I mean that this is like... He's closer to this place that he wants to be, right? Yeah. This, he wants to be a really great drummer, like one of the greats that he listens to. You know, Louis Armstrong, Charlie Parker, his, all this stuff. His, uh, basically, his the dinner scene really explains yeah. his, his uh, aspirations. Mm-hmm. What he wants to do. So, he basically gives up everything for drumming, right? So, Oh, the girl, his girlfriend. Yeah. And I like how... He missed his opportunity. That was very realistic how he let her go. She found a new guy. That I, I actually uh, yeah. like that. That was very good writing. So he's... For him not to get the girl, I like a bad, mm. bad thing like that to happen to the main character. But go ahead, sorry. So this is like a very dark movie, honestly, if you think about it. You know, oh, as definitely. much as this ending kind of tricks you into thinking that Oh, everything's good, right? Because he ends on a high note. There's a music uh, joke, I guess. Really, not even a joke. He ends on a high note. Oh, oh, literally. Okay, yes. So, I mean, I don't know what... He doesn't really... I don't know. But he lands on a high note, though, in this kind of success. He pulled off... He proved himself to Fletcher, in a way, you know? He didn't take this kind of humiliation that... Because Fletcher, at the end, he... He's like he invites um, Andrew. Uh, he yeah, he invites An- Andrew to to play with his band, right? Yeah, and he kind of tricks him basically because he doesn't know the song that they're playing. So he embarrasses himself, and then he's you know storms off, and then he but then he comes back and plays Caravan, and just keeps going and kills it, right? Yeah. So this this ending like really you end with wow like he did it but but He's I don't, you don't want him to do it like this isn't a good thing necessarily in the grand scheme of things in his life because Fletcher's winning and the whole point of him Fletcher won Fletcher won yeah Fletcher he got won. what he wanted he 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 you know and the end I guess justifies the means but there's a lot that happens in this movie that is not. Okay. It's not okay. So <laughs> Fletcher bad. abuses his students, yeah, uh, physically and mentally, right? Oh, so he, yeah. he hurts them basically. When he slapped, I forgot yeah. that the slap was actually in the the movie. Mm-hmm. I I was when I saw that again, I was like, whoa, okay, he really does yeah. like. So it's it's a it's a physical and a mental. And there's abuse. so much homosexual like stuff like about like like. Like gay stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. I like that was like, why? Because I think he's trying to he tries to get after this place that maybe he feels like they're insecure about, or he challenges them. Oh manner. yeah, and, her, and he went. Oh, he talked about how his mom was leaving too. That was like not okay. Yeah. So basically, he, go, he goes after them in a way that's not okay. Yeah. And then he leads Andrew, you know, Neiman to to to. Get in a car accident, get literal whiplash. He fights and then, him. And then go through still with the performance. And he tries to at least. He tries to play with bloody hands. He cannot. So this is that like he he basically has got them hooked on like the drug that is his approval and they just keep they want it so badly. So this like this all kind of comes together when Sean dies, this uh this guy that he was in competition with. That you know. Um and yeah. oh, uh, not, not no, 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 yeah, no, I was that's gonna... not the kid. Uh, so Sean was a former student, a former student that different, hung himself. There were different kids. There was a different kid that was in competition with him. Um, but so Sean, you know, Fletcher talks about how Sean's died in a car accident, but he was lying because Sean killed himself. Yeah. After having like depression, anxiety, those tears, like he's such a manipulator. Yeah, yeah. He's really a villain, but oh he, yeah, yeah, he's like. Uh, no, I think he just he is a villain. He's a villain, but like, he's a villain that I could, I could almost get behind. I could reason why he would want to do this. Sometimes when like I could get like a little like fantasy, but like comic stuff, like people are just killing because they're crazy, like the Joker. You know what I mean? But he. He has a reason for it, and he has a passion for it, and he lo- he loves music. He can play phenomenally. He's got a reputation, and he wants to make a good, like, 
musician. And I can't really see something wrong with that, except he just does it in the worst way possible. Well, I think that he... So, if someone like Andrew comes to him and wants to be the greatest drummer, basically Fletcher is saying that this is what you do to become that, right? You have to basically give up everything. Endure it so much. You have to, yeah, basically just, you have to, like, die for it, you know? (sighs) You have to just, you know, metaphorically speaking, you have to just kind of die for it and give up your life to drumming if you want to be one of the greats, if you want to be good at it. And, you know, this is... He had, like, Sean Casey was the guy that killed himself. He couldn't even take it. Like, this is the kind of shit that you're going through, you know? He committed suicide because of this kind of trauma that he experienced being Fletcher's student, right? So Andrew testifies against Fletcher. And he, you know, like, Mm. obviously he see like, he's saying that, you know, Fletcher won't find out and stuff. They, They assure him that, but... Fletcher gets fired, and he knows he he knows at the end, you know, that he fired him. That's why he does it to get him back, to get back at him. He he, uh, he ends his career basically. Except, you know, so he try so Fletcher's trying to get back at Andrew by inviting him to um, to this concert to play, right? And Andrew thinks nothing of it, and um, but then fucks him in that. Fletcher fucks him basically, yeah. So. The thing is that this is, at the end, you see this kind of, like, triumph by Andrew, but it's really not a triumph. A major battle, or, I mean, victory, victory. It's, like, it's almost a bad thing. It's, like, that Fletcher won. Fletcher gets what he wants. This, I think, what I enjoy about this movie is that it's very layered. Um, It's not so simple. Um, It's not, like, this... There's no, like, good versus evil. Like, Fletcher, I don't like Fletcher as a person, right? Because he's manipulative and all these things. But can I say that he's evil? Or, uh, you know, no, he's not evil. He's not even necessarily on the bad side. He's doing what Andrew wants. He's giving Andrew what he wants, right? So Andrew wants this. Maybe he shouldn't he's want this, but he wants this. pushing Andrew. In the direction that yeah. he wants, right? And so it's, it's very layered. It's nuanced. It's not simple. In terms of the plot being like like seeing what is right and what's wrong and what's good and what's bad because it's not it's not about that it's just about this is what some boy has to do to get to the place that he wants to be and it's, it's like really crazy to think about like this is not and this isn't like this is definitely this is a work of fiction that's based off of the director's experiences but but I can't say this isn't realistic to what people experience right. This kind of a mental abuse, this physical... You have to give up basically everything if you want to be successful in, in terms of music. And I don't know if it's this things. severe, though. I would say that, the, that I've heard stories that of it being just as severe. Damn. Well, if it is, then that's that's pretty messed up, if it is. Well, what I'll say is that Andrew drives himself to do it, and no one else drives him, you know? That's... Okay, so, so it has to do I've with I've seen a lot of experiences where, like... Parents force you into, you know, playing the piano and, and you're good at the piano and you have to keep going at the piano for the rest of your life until you're a concert pianist, right? Oh, Andrew drives himself, you know, the, his cousins make fun of him and stuff and all this happens, but, but Andrew drives himself. He wants this. He wants this himself, right? But later, his goal becomes more to like, like if his goal is to be a drummer, he gets a new motivation in that he wants to prove himself and be liked by Fletcher. Because the, and that's what Fletcher does. Fletcher puts them together and makes them seem like they're the same thing. If you want to be a great drummer, you have to you I have, have to, to like you. Yeah. You have to become up to my standard. And that kind of pushes Andrew in this direction that is like down. It's definitely it's downward. He loses a lot. I mean, I remember when he like just invites the girl to the thing and she's like, "No." And he's so he, he's so set on it. Yeah, he's so focused. Like, there's no emotion. He's just like this. This is how it's gonna be. I'm just gonna cut it off now because I, I already know, and he doesn't know, and he realizes that oh, I made a mistake. Yeah, but I think that it's in terms of his life and the way he wants to live it. He pretty much is doing what he has to do. You know, 
it's not going to work in the end. He knows that. And he has things that he cares more about than her. Yeah. That's, yeah. I don't know. It's just like bittersweet. Oh, that absolutely. That he did that. I, it's just like... But I think the whole thing's bittersweet. The ending's bittersweet. It's like... All right, great. We we got this happy ending where they smile, like, you know, Fletcher and 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 um. I just like to know, like after, smile. like what what can you give me like a possible scenario? What what did you perceive the end? Yes. I don't know. I don't, never really thought about it like that. I mean, I I can't imagine this goes well after. I can't. I don't see this. Like I think when you start to think about where this goes after, this isn't like. And and this was the spark for Andrew to um, become <laughs> the symbol, the greatest yeah. musician of all time. You know, I see it as like it's this is like this little bit, this little high note. But I can't. I still see this this downward spiral that he's on. I still. I don't think you'd be discouraged though. I think you'd still play, but not not for Fletcher. I don't think so. I think you'd realize. I do have the potential, and I can do great things, but I'm not... I have to distance myself because it's not good I'm not me. sure because he... they. It's almost like they're getting along at the end. Like, Andrews smiles with Fletcher in the end as, as the movie ends, right? So there's Because well, he finally reached it, but... Yes, but there's an acknowledgement that, oh, I did it because, like because... almost because you were hard on me. So it's like reinforces this kind of idea that... that he has to experience this kind of like pain and and torture and humiliation to get this way. And I'm not saying that he doesn't because this is the thing. Andrew's not naturally gifted, you know, in the sense that he's not a genius. There yeah. are geniuses, right, in, in anything. There are guy, people that don't have to put in the work and they're that good. There are drummers that are just yeah. that good, right? Yes. Andrew's not. Yeah, like Ringo Starr. Like, yeah, just exactly. Get, Ringo just Star, gifted. Yeah, yeah. So they're they're not that uh. he, Andrew's not a genius. He's not gifted necessarily at, at drumming. He's not bad, but it's gonna take a pretty much a million percent effort to get to the place that he wants to be. I can only assume Louis Armstrong and Charlie Parker had so much natural talent in them and this and rhythm built inside of them and, and all that stuff. And not to say they didn't put hard work in, but it, it seems like if Andrew wants to get to that part that place, he's gonna have to work like. I don't even know, a million times as hard as them at, at becoming a good drummer. Yeah, that's true. But, you know what? I think you're right that maybe he would stick with Fletcher. I think that he got this taste of success in the end, right? That he had never gotten the whole movie. Yeah, because oh, even... Well, really, not to this level. Even the father, I feel like, would... Because he was questioning it, but honestly, his son is his own person, and... They only really talk when they're eating food and whatnot. Mm-hmm. He he wasn't really a big part of it, so and he's got no woman to back him, like keep him down. So you know what? You know what? I agree. I you just think that me. he's he gives up a lot in the end, and this little triumph of you know beating Fletcher. He in his mind he he got Fletcher to like him and, and to respect him, but I have to see that as Fletcher only being happy in himself. Yeah. I just think that Fletcher is extremely self-centered and he's trying to make this, you know, he wants to, you know, spawn this next great drummer, right? To add to his legacy. But that's only to help himself. It's not to say, oh, I want to help, you know, I want to give back to this community. Like, it's only to serve himself. Yeah, it's not, I want to make a h- amazing, like, artist for everyone else to listen to. It's yeah. more like, I'll be known yeah. for that. Yeah, so I think it's a really good movie. It's very nuanced. I, I respect a lot of the, you know, aspects of it. Acting is great. Um, J.K. Simmons is obviously amazing in it, as Fletcher. Uh, the performance is, like, so intense and just, like... Neiman, I believe the actor... Miles Teller. Yeah, he, he's a... He's a real drummer, right? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. I think I heard that some uh, a while that ago. He actually plays drums and he likes it. That's why he liked or got the part, maybe. Yeah, I'm I, not I mean, too sure. Um, but I think the acting, everything's fine, and I think um, what drew what drew me the most is this kind of plot. Um, I thought that was kind of like where I was. It just keeps getting up and up. Yeah, 
There is a low point when he throws his drum set out, but I, you, I had a feeling the first time I watched it that it wasn't. But good. it felt it felt really real. Um, like the dialogue's very good, and, and it's yeah. not synthetic. It's very organic, and, and um, <laughs> especially the dinner scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and um, and I think it it speaks a lot on you know having these kind of outlandish, um, not outlandish, but difficult to attain dreams and goals and. And having to basically give up everything for them if you want them. And there's a lot that goes into following your dreams, right? Mm -hmm. There's humiliation and all this stuff that goes into it. And you just... In, at the end of the day, you're, if you're driven by... If you're driven, then you're not stopping. You know? You're going to keep going. So. so. Yeah. I think we're good. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't really have anything to talk about this week. So, I was going to maybe talk about, like, album rollouts, but I think it's okay um, if we just ended on this. I am I agree. Okay. So, you can... What's your movie for oh, next week? You, you go first. I feel okay. like you always make me go first. You go first. Um, the album for next week is Maggot Brain. All right, I'm going to write this down. So Funkadelic. Maggot Brain. Yes. All right, and the movie is, I don't know if you're going to like this or this is the right time, but I think it's its not um, The Village. It's okay. The Blair Witch Project. Okay, that's fine. So, all right, what did you say yours was? The Maggot Brain. Maggot Brain by who? Funkadelic. Maggot Brain. So, we'll have that next week. Okay, all right. See you guys later. Till then.